Okay, this is a really fun section. There's kind of a lot in here. This goes with section 6.5. It's video four for chapter six. And in this section, we're going to learn about um, a couple different new kinds of percent problems. Um, so this target has a lot in it. Make sure you write down that we're going to do percent increase and decrease, which I shortened to just percent change. Um, and then also percent error and finding what we call a new amount after there's been some sort of change. So let's get started. Um, so the three types, finding the percent change, um, so either an increase, if something has gone up, or a decrease, if something has gone down, finding a new amount after there's been some sort of change, so if something goes up by 5%, what is it now, or something's on sale 15%, what is it now, finding the new amount there, or, um, and this thing called a percent error. So we're going to learn the formulas for all of those, but if you have them on your paper, it'll be easier to find. Here's the first one, percent change, and I usually simplify this to percent and then a triangle. I don't know if I've shown you the triangle already in class. It's a Greek letter delta and it means change. So if you see me write a triangle, it means find how much the change was. Okay, so here are some examples. An item goes up in price by $10. Is this a big increase? Well, you might think yes, you might think no. Probably depends on what you're buying. If you're buying a pack of gum and it went up by $10, that's a lot. If you're buying a car and it went up by $10, probably wouldn't even notice, okay? Same thing about the population. Population drops by 500 people. Well, if that's New York City, nobody would even notice. But if it's Heartland, we would care a lot if we lost 500 people of our population. Or same thing for this percent error. If you um, were counting how many people and you thought um, you got a number and you were off by three, is that a big deal? Well, matters if there were maybe only five people in the room and you were off by three, or if there were 500 people in the room and you were off by three. So in all of these cases, it really matters what you have to start with. So that's why we have special formulas. We don't just say there was an increase or decrease. We turn it into a percent increase or decrease. And that gives us a little bit more information because we're comparing it to how many we started with. So when a value goes up, we can find a percent of increase. And when a value goes down or it drops or decreases, we find a percent of decrease. So we're going to use those words a lot to help us um, clarify if it went up or down. So for both of these, there's a formula. Write this down. The formula is to find the change, or you'll see me write my triangle, my delta, find the change, divided by the original amount. When you divide those on your calculator, you're going to get a decimal, but you need to turn that decimal into a percent and then label it either a decrease or an increase so that people know, hey, it went up by this much or it went down by this much. Okay. So the other thing you're probably going to want to write down is how do I find that change? I'm going to know a starting amount. I'm going to know a final amount. To get the change, I'm going to have to subtract those. So subtract to find how much it changed and then divide it by the original amount. So when you subtract to get that numerator, the amount of change, you always want it to be a positive number. Even if it went down or it dropped, leave it as a positive number just for how much it changed. And then if that amount went up, we label it as an increase. And if that amount went down, we label it as a percent decrease. So we don't usually label it as a negative. We would just say, hey, it was a decrease of that much. Okay, so here's some examples. Find the percent change. If something went from 10 inches to 25 inches, I have to find change over original. And the change here, I can tell it went up by 15. The original amount was what it started at, which is right here, 10. And I'm gonna divide those. But that, remember, is my decimal. I have to convert it or turn it into a percent. So move it over two places to the left and then label it either an increase or a decrease. Because this went up, I'd say it's 150% increase. Okay, number two, if I go from 57 people to 45 people, well, again, start with your formula, write that down first. 
change. How many did it change by? If I can't do that in my head, I'm going to just come over here and subtract them. So it dropped by 12 people, but I leave it a positive number. The change was 12. The original, sometimes you have to read carefully, go back and find out which number was first. So I started with 57 people. Divide that. And I get that number. You can round because there's a lot more decimals on your calculator, but round and turn this into a percent, 21%, and because it dropped or decreased, it's a 21% decrease. So try this one as practice. Remember, start with your formula, change over original, divide them, get a decimal, and then change it into a percent. So pause and try this. So I came over here first and figured out what my change was. The price changed $25. So 25 over the original 295, that gave me this decimal, which I converted into a percent, eight and a half percent increase because it went up. So you get to try these. Um, it could be any kind of context. We can find a percent change for any kind of numbers. So go ahead, use the formula, and then we'll check these three. Okay, so in the first one, it changed by 25, 25 over the original 87. I got 28.7% decrease because it went down. Here's the next one. It went up by 24, which came out to a 40% increase. And then here's the last one, which I want you to look at carefully. Sometimes it's tricky. This one says 2, 4 from 11. That means it started at 11. So 11 is that original number I have to divide by. So just be real careful. The most common mistake with these is picking the wrong number down here to be the original. So this one actually was a 63.6% decrease. Okay, this is the second type of problem, finding the new amount. Um, so there's two steps here. You're going to find the part. Remember, A was the part either in the proportion or in the equation from either section 6.3 or 6.4. Um, you can use either one of those to find A, the part, and then you're either going to add or subtract it to the original amount. So it's either going to go up by that much or down by that much. So let's look at a couple examples. Bob was making $875 per week, then he got an 8% pay raise. So we can ask two questions from this. How much was the raise? Well, this is just kind of step one, just finding, okay, how much was that 8%? What's the part that he got as a raise? So I can use the proportion or equation. Let's do the proportion here and equation in the next example. So A over W equals P over 100. If I read it again, I know he was making 875. That's his whole to begin with. Um, he got an 8% pay raise, so I could find the 8% here. And how much is that? What's the A? Find A. So cross products, cross multiply. I'm going to pause and work that out. So when I finished solving for A, I just did the cross multiplication there and got 70. So the raise was an extra $70 a week. So the second question, and this is really the, the new amount question, the one um, that we're looking at here. How much does he make now? Here's your clue word. Well, what is the new amount of his paycheck? So I'm going to add or subtract it on. In this case, it was raised. He's making that much more. So if he was at 875 but he gets an extra 70, now he is at $9.45. I'm sorry, $945 uh, for his paycheck after the raise. Let's do one more together. So write this down on your paper. Um, a $369 refrigerator is on sale for 12% off. Again, we could kind of ask two questions. How much do you save? So what's that part that you're going to be saving? So in this one, I'll use the equation since we did the, um, the proportion last time. Um, that's not right. So there's my equation. Remember, I have to put the percent in as a decimal. So I'll write 0.12. The whole is the original price that it was. And I'm going to solve for A. So I get 44.28. This would be how much he saves or the amount um, of the discount, right? The amount that they take off the price. But 
New price. What is the new price of that refrigerator? Well, if it was $369 and I get to take off $44.28, let's see what it costs now. I'm going to subtract it because it's a discount there. So I come up with $324.72 is the new price. So there's two examples for you to find the new amount. Remember, find A first and then either add or subtract it from the original. If it's going up, you'd add it. If it's going down, you'd subtract it to get the new price. So pause and try these. Okay, in the first one, I found the part here, and I found that the 205% um, the was actually an increase of $2.01. So to get the new price, I had to add it to what it started at, plus the um, increase, which was the 201, and it comes out to 299 for my new price. And then for the second one, um, oops, ah, there we go. So I'm cutting back by 35%. So I had to find how much that 35% was. And I got that to be 595. And since I'm decreasing it or cutting it back, I subtracted it from what I used to eat. And it looks like now I eat 11.05 pieces each day now. So that brings us to our last um, topic in this section, which is called percent error. So if you are making a guess or a prediction and you're off or you're wrong, you can calculate how much you were off by, um, or what we call the percent error using this formula. So it's how much you were off by divided by the actual or the correct answer. Again, that's going to give you a decimal. You turn it into a percent and then label it as a percent error. So let's look at a couple examples. Okay, in this one, you predict that there are 167 fish in Mr. J's tank. If you're within 5%, he'll let you keep one. So we've got to see if we're within that 5% error. Really, the actual number is 180 fish. Okay, so let's see how close we were. Remember, the formula is how much you were off divided by the actual. So let's calculate how much we were off by first. If I just come over to the side and do the math, it looks like I was off by 13 fish. So if I put that in, 13 fish, the correct number was 180. Let me divide that on my calculator to get my decimal. 0 0.072, which I've got to turn into a percent, so 7.2% off. That is not within the 5%. I was off by more than 5%. I was off by 7%. So I do not get to keep one. What if I had guessed 188? Let's check that. Well, now I was only off by 8. Still, there are 180. Do that math. I get this. So here, I would have only been off by 4.4%. Yes, I would have been close enough on my guess that he would let me keep one. Okay, last example together on percent error. Okay, so my husband is a packaging engineer. He designs um, boxes and packaging, and he has to be really precise in his designs. So for this particular box, it's supposed to measure 18 inches, but when he gets it back, it actually measures 18.2. So he has to say, okay, what's the percent error that we had in designing this box? So how much was he off by? Divided by the actual or the correct number. Okay, so um, in this case, he was off by, we can tell, 0.2 of an inch. And here the correct number should be what it was supposed to measure. I need to know how far I was off from this number. So off from the 18 and divide that. So I get this number, which is really tiny. And I still have to turn that into a percent, though. So move it over two places and I get 0.11% error in designing that box. So just careful, sometimes you might get really tiny numbers. They can, you can still have small percent errors. Um, so that was how much he was off by on that design. Okay, there are three here for you to try. Um, so set it up, find the percent error for each one, pause and then check. Okay, I've showed the work for each one. Remember to start with the formula first. Find your how much you were off by divided by the correct or the actual number and then turn it into a percent and label it error. So 15% error, um, and then check these two. 
I got 6.17 and then 6.9 or so error. So it's okay, keep keep a couple decimal places and then you can round it off 6.17%, 6.9%, okay? Thanks.